Tesla are one of the few automakers still using cylindrical battery cells. And Tesla were and still are the leaders when it comes to building the most efficient electric vehicles that go the furthest on a given battery supply. Now I am in a Tesla Model 3 performance. And while on this channel we usually do tech focused reviews, today we are focusing on something very specific what I call the Tesla battery advantage. I'm Luke, if you're new here, make sure you hit that subscribe button and welcome to another episode of The Future is Electric. Now we've seen pouch and prismatic cells on the channel from a number of electric vehicles, but we haven't seen any cylindrical battery cells. That is what Tesla used to use and still use today. They are cells which resemble in form the AA or AAA battery. So why haven't the other automakers copied them at this? Those are things we're going to be looking into today. When Tesla were starting out as a startup just 20 years ago, they needed an off-the-shelf solution. A battery, the 18650 as it's called, that could be bought off the shelf and was already mass produced, being used in laptops and other portable electronic devices. They got these from Panasonic and they later built a joint venture with Panasonic to build their battery plant in Nevada in the USA. So why didn't the rest of the industry copy Tesla in this regard and just use cylindrical cells? Well, there are a number of advantages and disadvantages to using these cells. The fact that they are round once you're putting them into a square or rectangular battery pack, it means you end up with gaps between the cells, thus you lose out on energy density. The cells also come in a steel or aluminium casing, which does make them heavier than those pout cells. The advantages though are that these cells were and still are mass produced. Cylindrical cells also dissipate heat better. The fact that the core of the cell is very close to the edge of the cell, means the heat in the middle will dissipate faster than say in a pouch cell format where the distance is greater. Now that played and ludicrous performance which Teslas are, let's face it, known for, is all thanks to the cylindrical cell design. While these shape of cells store less energy than their pouch counterparts, they are able to deliver a lot more power at one go. This is because since there are more connections per amp hour, as a result, the cylindrical cells are ideal for these high performance applications. This is what allows Teslas to be the fast accelerating road vehicles in production today. So let's officially introduce the 18650. This was the first battery cell Tesla bought from Panasonic to put into their vehicles and they bought it by the boatload because a Tesla, a standard Tesla, is going to have between 6,000 and 9,000 of these battery cells. The numbers actually indicate the size of the battery. 18,650, 18 millimeters along the width, 65 millimeters along the height, and zero at the end, which nobody tends to know how to explain. Nobody could explain to me why, why there was an extra zero. Now the original 18650 was an NCA battery chemistry, nickel, cobalt, aluminum. Tesla did then move to what the rest of the auto industry is doing, the NCM, nickel, cobalt, manganese, for their 2170 cell, which was a 33% improvement in energy density over the 18650. Those cells have become predominant in vehicles from 2017 onwards. In fact, they debuted with the Tesla Model 3. Tesla are now also using LFP cells. These were originally in their cars made in China. However, now they've made their way to Europe and the US. They are utilizing battery supplier CATL for these cells, as well as batteries coming from BYD. We're seeing a lot of automakers move to the LFP design because in this day and age, it makes sense. This is actually not a new, but an old battery design. LFP has been around for quite a few number of years now. The reason it wasn't used is because it didn't give the same capacity and it's a lot heavier than NCM or NCA. 
but now with the cars improving so much, we're able to put a heavier battery pack, which though is giving us some critical advantages. Longer cycle life. So an LFP cell gives between 3000 and 10,000 charge cycles. That means you're charging and discharging the car 3000 to 10,000 times and after all those cycles, the battery will still be very healthy and still giving a good performance. LFP are also cheaper to produce because they'd have no cobalt or no nickel for which prices have really skyrocketed recently due to demand. There is also the humanitarian issue with the mining of cobalt, which is thus being addressed with LFP battery cells. Now, during the 2020 Tesla battery event, we saw another major breakthrough, the introduction of the Tesla designed 4680 cell. Not only designed, but manufactured. So Tesla have always bought their batteries from other third party suppliers like most of the auto industry actually does. The 4680 represented a new cell, a cell developed by Tesla, which is being manufactured by them for the first time. But also, in true Tesla fashion, they've opened up the patents so other people can make the 4680. And a lot of companies are answering that call. Despite manufacturing now their own cell, Tesla are still buying battery cells from nearly all the major suppliers worldwide in an effort to keep up with ever growing demand. Now the 4680 was not the solid state breakthrough we were hoping for, but it did improve significantly over the current design by taking a number of factors and improving them and that allowed them to achieve a price reduction of 50% at the vehicle level and a range improvement of 46%. Now they are doing that by improving a number of things in the car, not only the battery cells themselves. And this is a number of processes which Tesla are employing in a timeline they forecast will be complete by 2025. However, seeing the recent price cuts by Tesla worldwide, you can already start to see the effects of this 4680 cell and what it's doing to the rest of the electric vehicle industry. Tesla is outperforming and now price cutting against its competitors. The Tesla Model Y is currently the best selling car in Europe. Not electric vehicle, car. It is beating out on all internal combustion sales. So I don't think there is a problem of demand. Tesla are bringing down their prices because they are implementing the plan they told us about in 2020 which is that through their 4680 battery cell, they are able to reduce their costs by 50% and improve their range by 46%. In fact, the 4680 has already found its home in the Tesla Model Y. Now there's an important improvement with the 4680, which is what we call the structural design. So I said earlier, the steel or aluminum casings actually add weight to the vehicle. That was seen as a disadvantage, but Tesla are turning this into an advantage. They're actually making the, sh the shells thicker to take more load. And in fact, the battery shells themselves now form an integral part of the structure of the vehicle. So previously, the battery pack was always added to the vehicle and there are a lot of structural components around it. This adds a lot of weight to the vehicle, which obviously decreases your overall range. And what Tesla have done using the structural pack is remove those supports because now the battery cells themselves are creating the support. And this is the design which a lot of people have said they will move towards. Volkswagen Group also announced they will move to structural packs. BMW Group have also said they will be using the Tesla 4680 cell. BYD and CATL are also now in production of structural pack designs. Now regarding cylindrical, pouch or prismatic, and which is better, we're going to have to wait it out and see more EV volumes to take a definitive call on all of them. They all have their advantages and disadvantages. So we simply don't have enough volume data from each to take a call. But based on the efficiency data so far, Teslas, as I said, were and still are the leaders when it comes to electric vehicle efficiency. 
battery cooling has become an integral part of the electric vehicle design. In fact, every automaker has implemented a form of battery cooling in their battery packs. We've got air cooling, we've got liquid cooling, we've got active and passive, and a lot of other in-betweens. And Tesla are, of course, probably the leaders in battery cooling, given they've been working at the problem the longest. Now, Tesla employ a number of techniques, including air cooling via the radiator, water cooling through cooling circuits, and natural ventilation holes. Now, we've heard of liquid cooling on many EVs on the channel. It's the biggest revelation of this decade. It's not only a safety feature, but it keeps the battery nice and cool, which, as we've seen, allows it to last a lot longer. This is where Tesla does something quite different. Given their cylindrical battery choice, they're employing a technique which cools the cells themselves rather than the module or the entire pack. This allows the cooling to get really uptight and close to each individual cell. All this battery cooling in history has led to some important stats. So if you've been following the channel, you know that I've driven down this Model 3 from Leeds all the way to the south of Europe here in Malta. This is not a new vehicle. It has 80,000 kilometers on the clock and is three years old. Now we ran a little battery degradation test to see how much degradation this battery has endured over 80,000 kilometers, which in Malta would take a very long time to accumulate. And it shows that the battery degradation is just over 2%, which means this vehicle has only lost 2% of its range from its original out of the factory, essentially range. And another thing to consider, now that the car is in Malta, in a more ideal climate and better conditions for electric vehicles, the car will probably give even more range than it ever saw in the colder United Kingdom. Now, my aim in this review was to strike a balance between explaining the technical without getting too much in detail, but also giving enough information to the EV enthusiast. If I've succeeded, please hit that like button. And if you haven't, subscribe is always very helpful. Now, as always, I'd like to thank Peter for helping out with all the technical, as well as Cars Unlimited for providing this Tesla Model 3. If you want a Tesla, I hate to break it to you, it is impossible to buy a new one here in Malta. Tesla simply aren't supplying right hand drive vehicles to the Maltese market. But Cars Unlimited have a few second hand Teslas for sale, as well as a number of other second hand electric vehicles, which you should definitely check out to start gaining the benefits of going electric. As always, I hope I've convinced you that the future is electric.